Hello and welcome to our video on CNU's Winter Scholar Upgrade. Uh, my name is Will White with ITS and I will be taking you through the information about this upgrade. If you have any questions you can always contact me at the information you see here on the screen. Let's talk a little bit about the details of the upgrade. One thing that I want to highlight is unlike many of our upgrades, this one does make significant changes to the assignment grading workflow. If you use the inline grading tool to annotate your students assignments you will want to watch the rest of this video. The upgrade will begin on December the 24th at 5.30 p.m. and Scholar will be unavailable until the 25th at about 5.30 a.m. Now some tools won't be working right after the upgrade. Um, inline grading will be in a degraded state until about 6 p.m. at the latest on the 25th and rubrics, portfolios, and safe assign may not work until the 26th. Um, we don't foresee anything happening with those tools, but we did want to let you guys know. Quickly is planned to be upgraded at the same time. It'll be unavailable beginning the morning of the 24th and will be restored by 1225 at 6 p.m. at the latest. So let's talk about some of the new features that are available in the upgraded version of Scholar. The big one is the new inline grading tool. We'll speak in detail about this, but it's a much more streamlined um, tool. Also, a large expansion of drag and drop file uploading, and some expansion of student assignment receipts. I did talk about a quickly update. Uh, those are mainly minor cosmetic improvements. All right, so let's talk about a few details about the new inline grading tool. First off, why are we switching at all? Well, the old tool, called Crocodoc, is being discontinued by the people that make it in January. So Blackboard has had to switch to a tool called New Box View, which is what we'll be talking about today. They have provided a process to convert all of the assignments that have been submitted already to this New Box View tool. That process will begin shortly after the upgrade, and while it's going on, you won't be able to view assignments on Scholar. If you try, you'll get an error message, but you will be able to download the assignments. That conversion process should be complete no later than 6 p.m. on the 25th. Once it is complete, you'll be able to see all of your old annotations directly on the documents that have been uploaded, but you won't be able to edit those annotations. So let's talk about some of the features of the new inline grading tool. The big advantage of it is there's a bunch of new file types. I have a few of them listed here, but there's far more than I can list in this short video. Some of the file types are text files, open document files, those that are created by Apache OpenOffice or LibreOffice, and source code files including Java, HTML, C++, and several other types. A nice thing about the source code files is they do include syntax highlighting. A note with these new file types, not all of them can be annotated. Word documents, PDFs, and pictures can be annotated right now, and Box, the company that makes the viewer, is working on adding more. Another feature that you may find useful is you can adjust the magnification of the page. If you're grading on a small device, or if students used very small fonts, you can actually zoom in, and we'll show you how to do that. Also, the Annotation types have been streamlined, so there's only three in the new box view. There are point comments, which can be anywhere on the page. Text comments, in which you can highlight a certain part of the text and make a comment on it. Or simple highlighting. Finally, annotations are not currently able to be downloaded or printed. You'll see them on the screen, but that's about it. So, I've gotten into this assignment exactly the same way as we did before. But you'll notice it looks a little bit different. You've got a different logo up here at the top, and the interface is a little bit more streamlined. Now, there are three ways that we can annotate the document. So the first one is the point comment right here. So we just click on the comment. We go anywhere on the document, even down here where there's no text. And we can type our comment. And then click Post. You can also highlight some text and either highlight it or comment on it. So if I want to comment on it,
I can do that. Or if I just want to highlight something, I think Winterhur is a cool name, I can do that as well. To get to these comments, then, and read what they say, you actually have to hover your mouse over them. So I can see my comment there. I can see it there. You'll notice there's a post or apply here. The students are not yet able to reply to your comments, but you can reply to your own comment if you think of something else that you wanted to say as well. The other thing that you can do is you can actually change the magnification level down here. So I can zoom in and zoom out. I can also print the document or download it. However, the annotations that I've made on the document will not display. That's really all there is to the uh, new annotation tool. Next, let's talk a little bit about drag and drop. Now this is not a new feature. It actually was added into Scholar with our summer upgrade, but it's been greatly expanded, both in the number of areas in which you can drag and drop files and in the capabilities of the tool. Um, the big advantage you'll see is the new areas where it's been added. So these include the content collection, blogs, journals, and portfolios. So all of those areas, you will actually see the dotted lines that represent dragging and dropping. The other thing that's been added is partial support for folders. So now you'll be able to drag a folder into that area and all of the files from that folder will be uploaded. It won't preserve the structure, so if you have folders within folders, it won't keep that. It'll just upload all the files at once. Let's take a look. Okay, to look at the drag and drop features, we're going to use a blog simply because a blog is one of the areas where the drag and drop has been added. So we're going to create a blog entry and you see these dotted lines here that indicate that you can drag and drop a file in. So the big change is that you can now add in a folder. So I've got a bunch of folders here. One of them is PDFs of training stuff. So I am going to just drag it right here. Notice it turns purple. When I do that, it'll actually attach all of those PDFs that were in that folder. If I'd had them in a bunch of different folders um, at different levels, it wouldn't preserve the structure. So this is not a way where you can build a whole class on your drive and then upload them into Blackboard. But it's a quick way to add a bunch of files. So student assignment receipts is another feature that was added in the summer upgrade but is greatly expanded with this winter's upgrade. Uh, the assignment receipts are now emailed to the students and they contain the submission date and time, the name of the assignment, the file name, and a confirmation number that can be checked against Blackboard's records. And once this is emailed out, um, a list of all of the assignment submission receipts is accessible to both faculty in the Grade Center and students in My Grades. Okay, so we're in student preview mode and we're going to submit an assignment so you can see how the receipts work. So we move an assignment over here and click Submit. And up here at the top you'll see the confirmation number. That has not changed from the last upgrade in Scholar. However, I'll pop this out of my email in a minute. I've also got an email stating my work was received and giving me some details about it, including my confirmation number, so that I can look it up. Now, the students may misplace this email. That's entirely possible. However, they can always see it if they go under My Grades. You'll see here, they'll click on Submitted, and you see Submission Receipts. I'll click on that, and I get a list of all the papers that I've submitted and the confirmation number. This will allow you to tell the students that they shouldn't consider their assignment submitted till they get this email or see this confirmation number. Now, as I said earlier, you may need to check these numbers as well. So, you can do that. You, I will get out of the preview and show you how. 
So to do so, you'll go under your Grade Center and go to Full Grade Center. Then in the Reports menu, you'll choose Submission Receipts. If you've had a lot of assignments, you may want to look up the student by their last name or by their first name or their email. I'm just going to say not blank so you can see what they see. And we click that and you can actually see the confirmation numbers and when it was submitted and all the same information that the students saw in my grades. This update fixes a number of bugs and I'll talk about three of the most visible. First off, you can actually control list indentation now with the tab key on Chrome and Safari. In the past, if you wanted to indent a bulleted or numbered list by pressing tab, it would actually move off of the content editor. Now it will properly indent just like on Microsoft Word. Also, you can now edit portfolios with Safari private browsing. Uh, before, it would cause everything to freeze and you'd have to close out the tab. And finally, you can now make quick comments of any length in the Grade Center as long as you don't use the content editor to do so. If you don't know what quick comments are, this doesn't apply to you, so don't worry. This also introduces a few new known issues. Uh, the biggest one you'll notice is the new inline grading tool doesn't work with Safari. Um, you can actually work around that problem and there'll be instructions posted in our blog post on the upgrade. Also, grades of zero will appear in the Grade Center and Students My Grades as negative zero. This doesn't actually affect any calculations, it's just a cosmetic issue. And finally, if you've created existing content and add a math editor image later, it will not display properly. So if you need to use the math editor, you need to create whatever you're doing fresh. So this was a lot to cover. Thanks for sticking with us. If you have any questions, you can contact me at the information you see here on the screen. Thanks and have a great break.